Hi everyone, Gerard Scarpacy, co-founder of Hairbrained here. Um, starting off a really special series, and it's called Professionals Who Practice. Um, and I think that that's what the best of us do, to be completely honest. I know that I spent the whole day yesterday practicing um, with some of these great mannequins provided by my friends at Pivot Point. Uh, and I'm super excited to share with you a little bit of what we practiced. And this whole series, it'll happen over the next three months or so, where we're going to bring some of our community, some incredible artists, and show how they practice on mannequins to perfect their craft and basically to create new ideas that they can share with you. So today, I'm working on Diane. You can see Diane here. She's a lovely blonde, blonde mannequin from Pivot Point. Say hi, Diane. Hi, everyone. Diane is perfect for what I'm going to be sharing here today, and I'll explain why. In the background, you can see the lovely Vanessa. Vanessa is a very long, luxurious mannequin, as you can see. Um, and that's really what I wanted to start practicing with um, long hair. It's not something I do a lot of, to be honest with you. I do shorter to mid-length hair quite a bit. So for me, I was like, well, the perfect thing that I need to start off practicing on and, and just thinking about, you know, for the next season of education, classes and shows... Is, is long hair. So I started yesterday with these two girls, Vanessa, and I cut them, you know, this first one here was cut very, very classically um, using kind of a forward graduation technique, which is just taking diagonal back sections, cutting it. I did cut it with a razor, allowing my hand to slide through to really build this beautiful length in the back. I'll turn around to you here, Kelly, and you can see that it's just a beautiful classic long layer. Um, and then the real practice for me, it is Fashion Week here in New York, and um, for the first time in probably three or four years, I used a curling iron, because it's such long, beautiful hair, I wanted to do something with it. I felt kind of weird standing there in my, my, uh, my pajamas blow-drying with a round brush, so I decided to do a little curling iron set, which we'll talk about a little later. And then this is Vanessa's twin sister, Vanessa. And you can see, again, this beautiful head of natural wavy. Here it's dried more naturally. Um, and I encouraged wave, I used a curl rod here and there, but the cut that I came up with here, I wanted to, you know, play around. Um, obviously still having somewhat of a traditional or classic balance, but approached in a different way. And that's what I'm going to share with you, share for you, with you here using the Diane mannequin. All right, uh, before you get into that, I just wanted to say hello to some awesome people watching, uh, Tristan and Aaron, Michaela, uh, even Duda, Lisa Marie. Thank you guys all so much. Uh, and Jeremy had a quick question. Is there still room in your razor class uh, for the Orange County class? Gerard? Yes, there is. There hey, is. Nanette. Thanks for joining us. are available at hairbrain.pro, and that's, uh, you know, a class for professionals who practice, you know. A little bit about, let me talk a little bit about this haircut and then I'll get more into the storytelling here. Hey, Anna. So this is kind of what I played around with yesterday on the long Vanessa behind me on the left, the, the natural curly one. Was just curl over to, here. To change the balance a little bit in a long layered haircut in a simple way. I worked in three panels. The first panel you can see here comes from the crown to the top of the ears. Within this panel, I wanted to keep length because it's definitely meant to be a longer technique, uh, but I wanted to take out a lot of weight, so right away that made me think about concave layering. So projecting out from the head and then bringing my hand around so that I was cutting from a slightly longer point, the hair that's reaching from the occipital area to a slightly shorter point on the inside. Brittany was wondering, is this a 90 degree? This would be higher than 90 degrees, technically, I think, you know, um, because I'm kind of up and then I'm traveling a little bit further, so I'd say I'm higher than 90, removing weight and flattening the hair out. Yesterday on Vanessa, which is this very beautiful long mannequin, I worked wet. I played with this idea in a very technical way, and I worked wet. And as I was working through, I thought, you know, it would be fun to practice it dry. Um, again, that's the whole idea of professionals who practice. Come up with an idea, play around with it, try it in different ways. Um, and that's exactly what I went for here. And I decided today to work here dry, so I went through and just kind of blow dried the hair with a flat brush. So I thought it would be easier for me to see different variation of the technique and for you as well. Can you show us how you're taking those sections? Is it a pivot from one spot? They're just vertical sections, so vertical sections that are traveling along like so, not really pivoting at all. 
vertical sections. They're brought back what we tend to call square so that I can keep some weight behind the ear, but no more than that because I don't want, I do want to get some layering in the corners. I'm point cutting with kind of a deep diagonal point cut to get a, an exaggerated texture into the ends or kind of a short tooth texture. And then I'm looking through the hair a few times. Working with a carbon comb, this is the, the Comb Bank Tough 20, which is great because it's anti-static uh, for working with dry hair. Now going in a little deeper. So I don't want to cut the layers any shorter, but I want to kind of serrate them a little bit more. Anna was wondering, Anna Smith was wondering how you determine your guideline. Great question, Anna. So uh, you can basically visually determine it, or in this case, I was looking for it to be proportionate. So I'm looking at the length of the outline, which I pre-trimmed a little bit. The Diana is about this long, but I cleaned it up a little bit. And then that becomes a true pivot point, And it comes first out at 90 degrees, and then I go a little bit higher, and that piece determines so I can have layers that really respect the length and everything below there drops out. You could cut disconnected from your outline, but it's gonna get way more exaggerated looking as you work. Again, just going through this, especially with dry cutting, it's a, for me it's quite visual and it's about refining, get the line in, get the shape in. Now going in a little bit deeper. And this is a dry cutting scissor or shear. This is the BMAC 61DS, which I really love to work with. So point cutting in deeper, um, after you put in your layers, why? Why do you do that? More texture and separation for styling. So all these little cuts here, when the hair is styled with a little bit of spray wax or something, it'll give a little bit more texture and separation. So you can see the effect of the panel here. I will come back and check my outline again. I'm working today with the tripod um, that is the universal tripod from Pivot Point. What's amazing about this, especially if you're a teacher or like what I'm doing today, is you can rotate the head around to show different angles. And of course the construction is incredible. All three of these tripods are from my own personal collection and I was talking about them today. Uh, the one I'm working on I've had since 2010. This one here, this one that has this beautiful Vanessa, well, this is one of the original Pivot Point tripods that I had in my collection. This is from 2001. And I've dragged this thing all over the world. Um, it's still doing beautifully for me. And then this is the Titan, which um, is another incredible, really well-constructed, heavy-duty Pivot Point tripod that I've had since 2005. So I've really traveled all over with these and used them in so many different ways. All right, awesome. So uh, Dominic from Malta is, is appreciating the long layer. Uh, Milo is here with us, as well as George Roundy and Nanette. Thank you guys all for being here. Um, Nanette was wondering about your feet movement and your body placement. You mentioned uh, square. Yeah, so for me, um, when layering concave, and you know, over the years, my, I've had a lot of different philosophies. I used to be really, really particular about body position and tell people you must stand here, you must stand there. But then over the years I saw so many different people standing in different places and getting great results that I started to realize that, you know, once you kind of learn some basic ideas, then, then you have to make it work for yourself. When I cut concave, as I'm doing here, trying to cut shorter towards the inside, I really like to have my knuckles on the inside and my fingertips on the outside. So I've chosen to stand basically to the left of the mannequin. We'll turn her around this way so you can see. And that allows me to just always be in this position and come through and drop my hand in to get that angle. Now for the squareness, I basically just stand right next to what I'm working on and I think about making sure that I bring it in square. For the opposite side, I just take a little step in. That works for me. You could come around this way. Here's an alternative. You could come around this way and get your fingertips in lower. That is another alternative body position. Let me see that one more time. Yep. That you could definitely theorize lots of reasons why this is a good idea, and it is a good idea. But again, there's other positions that'll work. You can work with um, step standing on the same side. So the thing is to practice a lot, and that's what's great about having these beautiful mannequins. And find what's best for you. Yeah, and find out what gives you the best, most consistent result. And you know what, then once you get it just right, break it up a little bit and try it from a different position. Because sometimes trying things in a new and different way 
is really the case. Anna was wondering if you can do this uh, with a razor, if you can do this haircut with a razor? You could, yep, you get your mannequin out and you start to think about how you could emulate the same kind of shape using a different tool. So absolutely. So here I'm doing a little bit of slicing where the corner is. So when you do such an extreme concave, you leave a little bit of a corner between the layers and the outline. And what that can do is make the haircut a little bit clunky or chunky. So you see that? That's where the layers stop and they meet with the outline. I don't want to take too much of that weight away. So just using this dry cutting scissor or shear to just slice through that corner and remove some of the bulk. You can see it right there. I might do a little more later, but that's just kind of step number one. Teresa was wondering um, how this would be different if it was wet, a wet haircut. Um, it, it, it's a little bit harder to control visually, but easier to control technically. So when hair is wet, you can grab it and keep it cleaner and more organized, but it's hard to see what it's doing. So here, I did this version wet, so here you can see a much longer version. Um, we'll talk about this next panel of layers. But underneath here, I used the same technique here yesterday on wet hair. Then I moved to the front, which we're going to do now on the Diane. So once this is complete, I'm going to take these clips out. I've tried to just gently clip the hair out of the way. When working dry, you don't necessarily want to bind the hair up for a very long amount of time because you'll get like a set. If I took this hair and twisted it all up and pre-sectioned it a lot, it would end up quite curly. So that's a great facet there with the universal tripod. I just pulled that down and I was able to turn it around and now I'm facing you. Eric B. Good is here with us and he says the bromance is real. Uh, you are gold, Gerard. Well, thank you very much. I, you know, I'm, as I always like to say, I'm the luckiest hairdresser in the world because, you know, my love for education and for learning and growing myself, I've been able to turn that into kind of a full-time job. So I'm the guy who gets to practice all the time and meet all the best hairdressers and spend time with them. Um, and then hopefully I can share it with you guys. All right, coming around the face now, taking a diagonal section from, you know, what people tend to call this the frontal bone. It's the forehead. Yeah. So sectioning off right at the forehead to the front of the ear. Now I'm going to do a little subsection here. This is a little protection piece. And I'll explain this in a minute. And I'm going to clip that out of the way as well. How much would you say? That's like about an inch or two inches? It'll vary from head to head. But on this particular mannequin, from the hairline to here, I'd say it's probably an inch and a half. Maybe not quite two inches, but it'll vary from head to head. So the Diane is a smaller head form, which is also great for practicing because um, it, you can get the idea in a little more quickly and kind of sketch it out as opposed to... Uh, Vanessa, which is like a full-sized head form, I think this is what they call medium. It's a lot larger of a head, it takes more sections, um, and there's a lot more hair to deal with. We've got a nice density here on the diameter, but the head's a little bit smaller, so as you kind of, kind of play with an idea, you can see where it takes you quicker. All right, hello from Sweden, uh, and uh, Nanette loves her air sprayer. So oh, we're glad. super yeah. glad about that little side note there. And Anna Smith wants to know uh, about your hair clips. These are made by my buddy Drew Schaefering. Um, we're going to have these available on Hairbrain Pro soon. He's made some combs and some clips. The reason why I chose these, I'll show you. Maybe we can see this on the camera. They've got this little band in them. So they're strong, but they don't put lines on dry hair, which I really like. It's something, you know, a little bit new clip technology that's come out over the past couple of years and now um, you can work with that on, on dry cutting or any type of cutting. Alright, so we're going to come into the front here. So again, on the longer version, I started right up here in the middle and I wanted, I didn't necessarily want bangs, but I wanted face framing, so I chose a point about chin length and I started to layer basically parallel to the head with very strong over direction upward to create the face frame. Now we're going to do that here in a shorter version where I do want more of a bang. So when I did that, I thought, oh, I want to push this a little further. I want to practice this and take it to the next level. But I used exactly the same technique. We're just going to come in shorter now. Right in the center. We want to think about where we want that length to fall. I want it to be about uh, brow bone length or bridge of the nose length. So I can literally come down here and put my fingers in and lift it up to get an idea. And it's quite a lot of hair, so I'll work my way down. 
I'll take some of this off. Now typically, as you can see with the uh, Vanessa mannequin, that's why I didn't want to cut all the hair off on them, but you can get a lot of lessons out of these. You know, normally in one fell swoop, I don't like to cut this much hair off a mannequin, to be completely honest with you, because you can get so much lesson and practice out of it. So you can see with the Vanessa, um, I personally, if I map that out for a class, from this first haircut on the Vanessa all the way down to a short haircut, I, I conservatively say I could get at least six haircuts out of it. But here for the purpose of demonstration, and since this is a Diane mannequin, the hair's already a little bit shorter to begin with, the price point's a little bit lower, uh, I'm kind of going for it, taking a little bit more off here. So just taking my time to get that length, still too long for what I want. I want a long bang. Obviously this first section is the most important, coming right off the head. Take a little more off. You seem to be coming in at a diagonal versus yeah, coming... when you want to remove length with point cutting, you want to come in at a diagonal. When you want to remove weight, come in vertically. All right, so if I was to just try to do this vertically, I would never get the length that I want. Okay, almost there. I want to take a little bit more off from the bottom. So playing around with the guide, and again, I'm practicing now. This is something a little different from how I did it yesterday, and I thought, huh, what if? I wonder how this is going to work. Still a little long. Let's get this guide right where we want it. Take our time, think about it. I'm dying to know why you clipped away the side pieces. So the pieces that I clipped away on the side are to protect the length so that the face frame that I'm going to create doesn't go too deep in. Almost like a little insurance. It's a little insurance and you'll see what I mean because all this hair is going to be directed up here and it's going to create a nice curvy face frame but by having a little bit of extra here that I clipped away right there that'll give me something to play with. So this length is almost where I want it. This is my last one. Again I'm practicing so just getting that length right where I want it. Now we got it. Coming through, fine teeth of the comb, nice even tension, scissors on a diagonal. All right, now we've got it, considering that I'm also going to come in and do a little point cutting to the length, but let's layer first. Okay, so I'm going to take sections that are kind of what sometimes we call radial. If you imagine they went all the way back to the crown, like the spokes of a wheel. Take them with the wide side of the comb. Elevate and over direct into the center. You know, so back to that question, dry hair can be a little bit harder to control, obviously, um, but visually you can see right away if this was wet, and again, I did the cut wet yesterday, I'm doing it dry today to practice a different version. If it was wet, it tends to be easier to grab and section, um, but sometimes you're not exactly sure how it's going to fall until it dries. So for me, you know, practicing and trying both approaches and seeing what works best and then how keeping an open mind. So Anna and Eileen um, were wondering about the scissors. Are they dry scissors? These are dry cutting scissors. Yeah, they're made by BMAC. That's the 61DS. It's available at Hairbrain Pro. It's one that I definitely recommend. You know, what, what's good about a dry cutting scissor is it doesn't cut as sharp of a line. It pushes the hair a little bit before it cuts it. So you're getting the whole idea is to, for the, the hair to be more textured and a little bit less, so, shall we say, softer. Working this through now, over directing, strongly back towards the center. Let's take a look at those, Brett. Yep. Yep. Now remember, some of this length is going to come up in a minute, but let's get this frame in first. Section diagonal. Over directing back toward the center. So when you mean that, you're not going like um, from section three to section two. Are you going from section three to section one? I'm not going all the way to one, to be honest with you. I think the hair is not extremely long in this case. So I would say it's much more square over direction. So just straight up to the ceiling or toward the center, but not all the way back to number one. I think that that would be a little bit more than is necessary here. Now the over direction is going to get a lot heavier now because the head shape starts to fall uh, more rounded. And I can start to, just again because it's visual and I want to be able to see what I'm doing, I can start to remove some of this excess length here in a curved way. 
Again, section diagonal. Still a little long. Now you're just kind of going for it, or, or do you have like a, a, a body, something like a face reference that you're going for? Or? Yeah, I'm, I'm working to the bridge of the nose in a kind of a serrated line that then curves down to the cheekbone. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side, and then we'll deal with this. So sections are kind of radiating off the crown, coming up and into the previous toward the center, using that previous guide sections on diagonals. Now, if you were going to, um, Eileen is here with us, and she's just joining us, and she was wondering uh, if, if this was a client situation and she came in, would you uh, shampoo her and dry her and then do this haircut? Yes. Uh, the way that the hair is dried for dry cutting is very important. I recommend like a neutral flat wrap, which is wrapping the hair back and forth in kind of like an X pattern so that you're accounting for root movement and the roots can move in lots of different ways. So I do a neutral flat wrap and then I really just flat iron the ends, not the roots so much. Try to kind of stay away from working on them. Um, and yes, I do, you know, I do like that hair to be clean and controlled as much as possible so I can really see what I'm doing and how it's working out. And again, you know, if you get the chance to practice it on a mannequin, you can see, you know, even when working with these mannequins, if you don't dry it and flat iron it, you know, they kind of, they come in a box and the roots can kind of be contorted a little bit. So it's great to have control and finish to really see what you're doing. So cutting that curve line in, just using point cutting, layering. I'll do a little checking before I start to blend into the sides. And now I'll go in and I'll use a little bit of deep point cutting. Vertical. And what, deep. what makes it deep? You're going in. See um, how much deeper I'm going? I'm not mm -hmm. just. I, I don't want to cut the ends anymore. I want to create separation, and it's deep. I'm holding much lower. Would you say like an inch or two, or maybe more? Um, this blade is probably three and a half inches. The blade itself. I'm using the full length of the blade. Hey, Dara Smith. Thank you for joining us, and everyone. We appreciate your time learning with us today. So today we're starting a special series for those of you that are just joining us called um, Professionals Who Practice. And what we would love to suggest is over the next uh, couple of months as we get different professionals besides myself to work along and share with you guys, you can pull out your mannequin and work with us and ask questions as you do it. You know, this whole series is kind of sponsored. It's a brainchild of working together with Pivot Point. You know, Pivot Point, legendary uh, in education, Leo Passage, what he created for the industry through his schools, his educational tools, his methods of haircutting and teaching. So grateful for that. And uh, they've been, Pivot Point has been a sponsor of Hairbrained for a very long time, I'd say over five years, um, which is wonderful. They, they allow us to do the great things that we do along with the other 15 sponsors that we have. Um, and we thought it would be great to do a special series featuring professionals like myself. I think I'm a professional. I've been doing this for 27 years. I get a lot of practice. Um, doing haircuts, coloring. We're going to have Lupe Voss doing color. We're going to have myself doing haircuts. We're going to have Ruth Roach doing styling, which is amazing because she's one of my favorite stylists. I can't wait to see what she comes up with. Um, and then we're going to have Stay Gold, also known as Sophie Pack, um, doing some men's cutting. So between now and, I believe, April, when we go to Chicago. So you can see now I continue to overdirect in a little bit more. So this became a stationary guide. So it was square to the round of the head, then stationary, so that I could continue this face frame. Now you can see why I dropped that corner out, because that's what's going to give me something here as a safeguard. So bringing the, the sections to that stationary guideline allowed you to have that perfect face framing going from shorter to longer. Correct. And now you can see doing some checking, allowing the comb to slide through the hair. And, you know, it's imperfect. You know, I want it to have a little bit of texture. I mean, I want balance and shape, but softness and looseness at the same time. Now we're going to do the same thing on the opposite side. Great. I just, I just recalled a um, question from Tristan. He wanted to know about anti-static comb. What, and you mentioned earlier that your comb was anti-static. I mean, in general, when working on dry hair, tools that are made from carbon um, will make it less staticky. So this is a carbon comb. 
and I found that you'll get less flyaways and less static when using a carbon comb. Aaron was wondering is if there is a hair type that this would be best for. You know, it's very, uh, like here you can see the Vanessa mannequin has quite naturally curly hair. Um, I did the technique longer, and I, I did exactly the same haircut, but I did it wet, and uh, it worked quite well. I put a few curls in around the top just to, to polish it, but all the rest of this texture on the Vanessa is totally natural. I just did a few around the front so she'd look fashion week ready. Um, so I think, you know, any technique that's worth practicing and learning should be versatile. You should be able to figure out how to put it on different, you know, textures, which is what I'm doing here. Like I did it yesterday on wet hair, knowing that I was going to try to finish it really kind of curly and wavy. And then I said, today I'm going to do it on, on much straighter, you know? So this Diane mannequin definitely has a bit of a smoother texture to it. And then I polished that a little bit with flat wrapping and a, and a light flat ironing on the ends. And now we're getting some practice to see how it would work on different textures. I think that's kind of the, the moral of the story here. Great mannequins, like the ones that come from Pivot Point, there's lots of different textures, densities, and you can try for yourself when you think, hey, I, I wanna see what this would work on curly hair or straight hair. They've even got a beautiful ethnic mannequin that has incredible curly hair that I can't wait to get my hands on. Amy was, um, I'm not sure if, if we'll know this, but uh, Amy is doing a trade test on long layered haircut this week and was wondering if you have any tips to make a trade test a successful one. You know, I think focus on what you do best, practice. So I would hopefully you've been practicing either on live models or mannequins or both. And, you know, typically in the past when I've overseen trade tests for people, I just wanted to see that they could do the simple stuff really well. I think that that's the most important. So taking proper sections. Taking proper sections, making a client look their best, um, you know, respecting and explaining themselves well, doing a great consultation. Um, Just I, not overcomplicating it. Not overcomplicating it. And very rarely, you know, was I looking for someone to reinvent the wheel and be super, super creative because you know, that's not the best place to start off. I want to see what your fundamentals are like and what your craftsmanship is like. And I would say focus on the fundamentals, do them really well, get great models. Um, or if you're doing it on mannequins, get great mannequins like these pivot point mannequins, which are awesome. And, you know, stick to what you, what you do best. So here doing a little bit of that refining on the frame on this side. You can see by over-directing the layers up, I started to make a length here. A little cross-checking needs to happen. I think I'm a little heavy on the left or the right, like depending on which angle you're at. So I want to balance this out. This side feels a little heavy to me. As you're doing that, Maria was wondering, and she, she missed the beginning, so uh, your fringe wasn't sectioned off in, in a triangle. No, it was not. So I'll recap for those of you that are just joining. We started at the back doing concave layering underneath here. The reason why everything's not sectioned off is because the hair is dry. If I twist it all up and section it off, we're going to get uh, like lots of curls and things like that. It'll be almost like a set. So I'm choosing to section as I go, which I do very on it, uh, very often with dry hair cutting. Um, the front here was much more of like what sometimes people call a halo section. I came back um, to what I call where the parietal bone starts. Here's the frontal bone. It's just the hair that falls in the face. And it made, now this fringe or this bang or whatever you want to call it, could be part of a much longer haircut. It can be part of a shorter haircut. It's great if you're thinking about putting hair up and just having a front that drops out. You can see here I've uh, made sure to save a little piece here. Now that would be, especially with dry cutting or razor cutting, um, a very important piece to connect through to the length. So refining, I think the balance feels good now. Using a bit of slicing, that's what's great about these scissors, they're great for just defining and slicing and seeing how that hair responds. Zoe Hughes is getting a little anxious and just wondering what else uh, you're going to do with the rest of the hair. So we put the layers in the back. Yeah, Zoe, we're going to now layer the top, so hopefully you can stick around for that. So we're going to move into this next area. And again, you can, I can show you here on the Vanessa, which is the much longer version. 
we under we layered the back we layered the front now we're going to do some long layers here that fall over everything so hopefully you've got the patience to stick around if not sayonara okay so let's see harris was wondering if the mannequin's hair color is a 903 uh yes i would say yeah so here's the the story here it's coming um, in a little warm here on the thing but it is it is a pretty much a 903 three being gold so here's the story here this mannequin is later on in the series it's going to be colored by lupe voss so these mannequins that they come from uh, pivot point at this light, like I guess it's like a nine level at least, mm -hmm. um, and then you can start to do fun deposit type color and things like that. So Lupe is going to do a fun color on here. So this was the first guide in the back. Here's the second guide in the front. Now we're going to do something in the middle that's longer than both of those and overlaps. So we're going to come through. We'll separate it out at the crown. One of the things I love about a great mannequin from Pivot Point is the natural fall of the hair, the way that it is embedded in the scalp, it really does um, work just like natural hair fall. So you can get a really good, you know, other mannequins, perhaps inexpensive mannequins, or, you know, I've taught lots of classes over the years where people will come in with something they bought on eBay and it's not even human hair and it's impossible to teach. It's impossible. If you're going to spend the time to take a class and to learn or to practice, you want quality. And that's what you're going to get with a pivot point mannequin. Especially if you can get many haircuts off one, it's Absolutely. it makes it worth it. Out. I mean, this one that I'm doing here, I would definitely get four haircuts out of after this. These guys right here, these super long ones, including this, I would get at least five more haircuts. So, you know, I would tend to get four to six haircuts out of a mannequin working through. And that's what we're gonna do with this series here. Starting off with longer haircuts, then going into mid-length, then going into a little bit shorter. All right, so you can see I'm putting a new guideline up through the center top between the layers at the back and the layers at the fringe. And again, just like anything, we're gonna put it in, we're gonna see how it's falling, we're gonna decide if we need to take a little bit more off, or if we need to make it a little more round, or vice versa. So I wanna see how it's falling in the back. I like how it's falling in the back, but it's not, it's not speaking enough to me. It might be a little heavy, I think in general it's still too heavy, so we go back to that first guideline. You know, spending extra time on the first guideline is the most important thing you can do. Our friends from uh, from Tonic Hairstyle from uh, Greece is here with us. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, those guys are nominated for an HVA this year, I believe. So hopefully we'll see them coming to New York. Are you guys going to come to New York on March fourth for the Hairbrain Video Awards? We I hope, hope to so. see you guys there. Yeah, and we've got was... over 30 nominees from around the world, and we'll have a party with at least 500 attendees. That's what we get every year. It's here in New York during IBS weekends at a club called Arena, and tickets are available now on Hairbrain Pro. Nanette was wondering about the scissors. Um, how are they in your hand? Are they heavy? Are they no, light? they're super light and comfortable. Compared to... Yeah, they're not, you know, the shape of a dry cutting scissor is more rounded. The blades kind of round in and round in. So the idea is as they close, they push the hair a little bit as they cut. So they're still just as sharp, um, but the action, instead of pulling the hair into the scissor and cutting it clean, it pushes the hair out from the scissor and cuts it softly. Um, I don't find them aggressively heavy at all. I find them very, very comfortable. Eileen was wondering, um, is the same haircut as Vanessa in the background? Yes, all these mannequins have the same haircut? Well, no. This and Vanessa, this one have exactly the same haircut. Okay. This one here, this Vanessa, this is a more classic long layer um, where everything was just cut in sometimes what people call like a forward graduation. I put a face frame in. I over-directed the hair forward and around, and I used the razor. You know, to me, the difference is it's about subtlety. Um, I... I feel like this is a more innovative approach. It gives different movement, different texture. But my goal is never to shock. So I don't, you know, I don't try to say, oh, look, it's so different from the classic. I want it to, I find when things resemble the classic, but have a little bit of a twist to them, people in general find them more beautiful. You know, and I'm a salon-based hair cutter. Everything that I do, I only do things that I know my clients would be happy with. You know, I still do clients every week. And that's the kind of work I try to focus on. But I also have to feed my own creative soul. So by practicing different ways of approaching commercial shapes, that's how I do it. So, of course, we all do tons of long layers. 
So every year or so, if I can play around with a new approach, for me, I'm not saying no one's ever done this before, I'll be honest with you, when I think about great long haircutting, I always think about Tony and Guy. I think that's a company that's done an incredible job, TG. Um, and, you know, I think this type of haircut with these disconnected panels, for me, that's kind of something that comes from that approach of haircutting, and I love it. Can we talk about the sections you just took? They seem to be uh, yeah, super horizontal. Simple. Vertical section. So first I put a guide all the way through, kind of a profile guide from the back to the front, just to, you can see the layers underneath dropping away. And I ended up kind of rounding it just a little bit because I felt like that was giving me what I wanted. Then for control, I separated it. Instead of trying to work all the way through, I separated at the apex or the crown, high point of the head. And I just took, if looking at it from your perspective, you might call them horizontal or you might call them vertical if you work from the top down. Um, it just really depends, but they're just from the crown to the face and over directed again towards the center, not all the way back to number one, but towards the center. Oh, yep, I think you just answered uh, Brandy's question. Are you over directing at all right now? Absolutely, because if I wasn't, this would be out here like this. Let's use this great little knob here and turn the head around. Boop, 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 boop. If I wasn't over-directing at this point, this hair would be what we call on base. It would be coming straight out from there. If you stand in the front, it would probably be mm -hmm. easiest to see. So this would be on base, straight out from the head. I'm bringing it back toward the center. How much toward the center depends on the thickness of the hair, how much length you're trying to maintain. You know, I'm constantly evaluating it. I would say I end up basically over directing pretty much square um, until I get to the round of the head and then everything becomes stationary. So each one of these sections, if the head is just upright, is coming from the floor straight up to the ceiling. So that literally is directing it back towards the previous section and towards the center. Harris was wondering, um, could the fringe have been cut with a razor and created, you know, in a fairly similar result? Absolutely. You can cut with whatever you want. That's the whole idea of practicing. So get yourself a mannequin, you know, and, um, and try it out. That's the idea. So I've cut with the razor, I've cut wet, I've cut dry. We want to be able to do everything. You know, and thinking one way is the right way or the best way, I find that's the one thing you don't want to do. You want to keep experimenting, keep practicing, keep trying new things because once you think you've found the best way or the right way, that means you're kind of boring. You, you, you're, you're stuck. You're doing things the same way all the time because it's the right way to do it or the best way. And with what we do, that doesn't work. You have to keep discovering new things. It keeps it interesting for your client as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. So just tightening this up. There we go. So as I was spinning the head around to show different angles, there's a little lock on the bottom. I just want to retighten that. Okay, Vasilis was wondering about the scissor uh, again. This is a BMAC uh, dry cutting scissor. They're available on Hairbrain Pro, and they're deliberately shaped uh, for cutting dry hair without creating too clean of a line. Over directing that all up now, and you can see the front line cut, and we can see how this is starting to shape around the face. Nice kind of Rocker look, bangs into long layer. You can see by keeping that extra piece disconnected, I've got extra length around the face to play with, which was especially important in this very long version on the Vanessa to go from these extremely shorter layers to the length and that beautiful kind of flow. This piece here was crucial. So if you look back on the video, there was a little disconnected area in front of the ear. Didn't seem like a big deal, but it's a very important part of the haircut. Okay, now coming to the back crown area. I've already put a profile guideline in here, so I'm looking for it. Coming back, take a smaller section. It was, uh, you know, beautiful density of hair here. Just like a nice healthy head of hair. Okay, there we go. You can see the length from the front. I can see the guideline that I previously put in when I started by putting the guide all the way through. And now following that through. Again, my sections are going to be purely vertical, and I'm going to be thinking about over direction, kind of squarely, looking at how the hair is falling. So taking the vertical section, just straight, coming back to the previous, because the head pretty quickly rounds away. So if I was on base, I'd have to kind of push away from myself a little bit instead of towards myself. 
you have to determine how much to overdirect based on the length, the weight, the density of the hair, and all of that good stuff. All right. Thank you again, everybody, for joining us. We appreciate your support. Uh, Gerard, they're loving your haircut. Glad. Thank you for so joining us. We're in the first of a series here that's going to be called Professionals Who Practice. So the idea was we chatted with Pivot Point and we said, you know, hey, I know for myself, I've been a hairdresser for 27 years. In the first 10 years of my career, I never used a mannequin. Never. Um, I worked at Vidal Sassoon and we had a certain belief there that you, you shouldn't use mannequins, um, which I can understand. You should always work on a human being. And I did that for 10 years. And, and when I left, um, I went to teach a class at an Aveda, at Aveda Congress that I was booked to be a teacher at. And I got into the class and it was all mannequins. And I was freaked out. I didn't know what to do. Uh, my buddy Oscar Bond, who I'm sure a lot of you guys know, he was also teaching. And I said, Oscar, I've never used a mannequin before. And I'm sure he said something incredibly witty and funny, but he basically said it's the best thing that's going to happen to you because as a teacher, everyone can get a consistent lesson, they can all practice, they can all learn from each other's mistakes, they're all working on the same type of hair. Versus you if can, you had a, a person as a model, every hair is different, every hairline is which different. Which is great, that's also great, but it's different, you know? So, you know, when you're practicing and trying new things, it takes away a bit of the fear, it takes away a lot of the anxiety, and it also, you know, the. The way a great mannequin, like the way these pivot point mannequins are constructed, you don't have the difficulties or challenges because a lot of people, a lot of models, don't have good hair. Um, and of course we want to learn how to make hair that's not good look good, but when you're practicing at first, you know, having a more perfect situation I think makes for a much better lesson. And now here I am, 27 years in teaching classes all the time. And I really, as much as I love live models with a very small group of people uh, who can get great models, I almost always recommend mannequins because we can get a lot more out of it. And we can do a lot more haircuts in a day. When I teach a class and it's got eight or 10 or 15 people in it, if each one of them has a great mannequin like the Diane here, we can easily do four haircuts a day. It can be really hard to find four great live models in a day. All right, so Sandra was wondering about where you can order the mannequins. Yeah, go to pivotpoint.com. Uh, they, they do uh, monthly sales, which is great. Now, I want to say something about these mannequins. They're not cheap. Um, I think this Diane one is about $83. The Vanessa there, that's over $150. But I learned a lot about this in this experience with Pivot Point. Uh, Pivot Point manufactures these in a completely ethical way. They're a company that's certified as an SA8000 company. So that means the factories around the world that they work in have dignified labor with people paid a fair wage for their job. And there's a video interviewing people, a couple in China, and how working for Pivot Point and getting paid a fair wage has changed their life. So number one, you're getting quality here beautiful hair that's super well constructed. Number two, you're working and supporting a super ethical company that's doing something incredible. And I know that that's the legacy of Leo Passage and in a very, very important thing. So they might be cheaper, but there's definitely not better. And there's definitely not more ethical ones that you can feel and stand behind. Dominic had a great question and was wondering about these series, if they would be on the same day, like a Monday or Tuesday. Uh, we're going to be putting out the calendar, uh, but they'll generally be on Sundays and Mondays over the next couple months. And for those of you maybe that don't know, we do Hairbrain Lives almost five times a week. So almost every day you can tune in on Facebook and you can watch some great live education with different people. This particular series is going to be over almost every two weeks. We've got one planned between now and April. Um, so, and we'll definitely get that out there. So now what happens, you can see we're starting to get this cool layered shape. Now some of that hair is going to fall over the fringe. Now I'm going to start to again work into refining. Before you start that, Laura was um, mentioned, you know, when she point cuts at that angle, uh, it gives her weight lines when at zero. Um, she's probably too steep. So Can you give us a... Yes. So again, it's hard to say without seeing. But when I come in, I'm at a diagonal. If you're more than diagonal like this, you can get weight lines. So for me, when I point cut, it's either vertical. 
for deep point cutting to remove weight, close on the way out like tweezing. When I want to make the hair shorter, which I don't want to do because this is the length I want it to be, my blade is at about 45 degrees. Anything less than 45, I would find I would get weight lines as well. Hope that helps you, Laura. Yep. So bringing this hair forward and seeing what drops over the face. You could do some cool effects with a veil, but it's not what I'm going for. I want something a little more commercial. So I'm opening some of these pieces that are falling over out to the cheekbone. Now I do like some of the pieces that are falling over as we get into the cheekbone. And now I'm going to start to use some slicing or what other people maybe call channeling. Opening and closing the scissor without closing all the way and following through. Kayla was wondering around. where you teach classes. Kayla, I travel around. I go to a lot of the trade shows. I'll be at, uh, the next thing we have is in Chicago on March 12th. We've got what's called Teach In. And then I'll be back in Chicago in late April for the ABS show, um, teaching hands-on classes there. If you go to hairbrain.pro, um, you can see I do see I have a class this Sunday in Orange County, California. Um, I've got a class in Denver later in March. So we're traveling all over. But in, you know, in the next couple of months, we've got LA, Orange County, um, Denver, Colorado, Chicago a few times. And let us know where else you'd like to see us. So again, getting that overhang from the layers, doing some slicing. So again, this was the Vanessa version yesterday where I started off practicing a long version, working curlier. I cut this on wet hair, but I cut it using the exact same technique, just longer. And then I decided today for my practice, I wanted to go into something a little bit shorter um, and straighter, and I wanted to do it on dry hair. So I feel like I've got all the parameters in. Oh, drop my comb, let's get a fresh one. I've got all the parameters in here, so to speak. Now it's going to be all about deep point cutting every inch or so. So I really, I've gotten the shape in, done a little bit of slicing around the face, but I haven't really done much deep point cutting. And that's going in straighter and deeper. What are you looking for? How do you know that you're done with your point cut, with your deep point cutting? Um, you'll see separation. You'll see space in the hair. So as you look through, you'll see some space. And if it's not done, or if the hair is particularly thick, like on the Vanessa, I would go in two or three times in the same place. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. The Diane, the density is a little bit lighter. So I just need to go in once and pull out. Once and pull out. Kaylee was also wondering about your history. Uh, what school did you go to? And, and maybe what your quick, quick history of your past. You know, I didn't go any place special. I went to a local... Uh, school in, here in, in New York in New York and I actually was a terrible student I dropped out ba basically and I finished off in barbering school that was in 1991 but along the way I got great advice from people um, and they said at that time it was 1991 they said if you want to be a great hairdresser you got to get great training you need to go and work at Vidal Sassoon I went to Vidal Sassoon in Manhattan I put on a jacket and a tie uh, it was like my communion suit or something and I went in for an interview, and luckily at 18 years old, they hired me as an apprentice. I spent 10 years at Vidal Sassoon as a stylist, first as an apprentice, then as a stylist, then as a teacher myself at Vidal Sassoon Academies around the world. Um, and I still hold it as the most important, valuable experience of my life um, that really, you know, was like my Harvard degree that allowed me to go from there. You know, from there, I opened my own salon. I moved back to New York. I opened my own salon in New York, which I owned for several years until an offer came from Aveda. Aveda had opened a um, Academy? advanced academy here in New York City. And my, my friend David Adams and Virginia Myers, they asked if I wanted to go there and work alongside John Raymond as the artistic director. And uh, I did. As much as I loved owning a salon, I really felt that I couldn't pass up the opportunity. Um, and I didn't really love owning a salon, let's be honest. It's a tough job, it was kind of thankless, and I wanted to get back into education. So I went ahead and I went back to Aveda in 2005, and I worked at Aveda the, as the Advanced Academy Artistic Director until about 2010. Then, you know, we had founded this thing at that point, myself and Randy Taylor, called Hairbrained, which is what you're 
experiencing now, maybe for the first time, maybe for the thousandth time. But the idea was to spread education and good vibes and community everywhere through our own app, through Facebook, through Instagram, through YouTube, through our own store, through our live events. And that's what we've been doing ever since. So hopefully that wasn't too boring. Sherry had a question. How do you stay current? I practice. You know, that's what this whole thing is about. It, I could easily not be current. You know, um, I've been a hairdresser for 27 years. Um, I don't cut hair as much now as I used to, to be honest, not being a salon owner. I'm only behind the chair one day a week. The rest of the time we're doing these videos and traveling. So to stay current, I have to practice. Yesterday, I spent the whole day working with these two beautiful Vanessas in my, in my dining room, in my pajamas, and you know, and I was so inspired by the end of the day, cutting and styling and playing around and coming up with this idea, which is a variation of the long one here. Um, and I, that's the whole idea behind this series of what we want to say is that, because everyone you're going to see over the next couple of weeks doing this mannequin work, they're all super successful and they're all professionals that are out there and they all practice regularly to stay inspired. And that's really the message. Get great mannequins, invest in them, plan it out so you can get four, five, six, seven haircuts out of a mannequin, maybe even more if you start to go down into clippering and barbering and scissor over comb, you could probably do even more than that. Mike Lee was wondering, how did you determine your perimeter length? The perimeter length in this case was pretty much there. This is the length that Diane starts at. This is the length that Vanessa starts at. It's actually maybe a little bit longer. Um, but my goal with these lessons was to keep the length on these mannequins kind of where they were when they started, but then creatively use long layering to make something special happen. So, and you know, that, that Vanessa has lengths as long as 20 inches, and here, the Diane, I think, has up to 14 inches. Let me check out the note here. 12 inches. So from the hairline down here, it was 12 inches long. And my goal, and these are what they call solid form, which are great for creative, because that means they don't come super layered out of the box. They're almost like one length. There's plenty of hair to work with. So when you do have a great creative idea, you can really have hair to work with. But they also have layered versions. You know, let's say you're, you're not gonna cut it and you want it already layered and you wanna just practice styling or pin curling um, or color. So go to pivotpoint.com and check out all the different variations of mannequins that you can use. All right, I'm feeling good about the haircut, where it's falling, all the dimensions, the bang, the layering, the layering through the side. I'm Great, we start... just had a question about products in dry hair. Yeah, I'm gonna and now we're here. Bit. This is uh, one of my all-time favorites from Paul Mitchell, Spray Wax which I think is great for these kind of textured cuts. I'm just pushing it in to the ends of the hair, pushing it in, little bursts, shaking the can, and you can see all these kind of cool, it, it exposes other things. I still probably have like a little tiny bit more cutting that I'd like to do, but I always like to add in a little product to bring out the shape and the form. And this is just a spray wax. I'm sure there's lots of great ones out there. One of my all time favorites is that Paul Mitchell Spray wax. All right, Sabrina, Nanette, thank you guys all so much for your support. Darcy, we appreciate it. Cindy, thank you for your support. Hope you guys took home some aha moments. Yeah, so again, Professionals That Practice, it's kind of our new series. We're going to be featuring myself, Ruth Roach, Lupe, Lupe Voss, um, Stay Gold, who's a female barber named Sophie Pack. I'm sure many of you guys know her from Instagram and from all that amazing kind of social media posting and great barbering events that she does. So over the next couple of months, we're all going to be practicing here. So you can see now that I have that wax in there, I can use my fingers to bring out some of that texture and movement. You know, all this hair is incredible. I um, responds beautifully to thermal work. I used this uh, cool new Amica curling iron that I got a few weeks ago, which I, as I said earlier, I can't tell you the last time I used the curling iron. And I curled this, this was actually curled yesterday, then it was thrown in the trunk as we came over here. Uh, and you can see how well it held up. So for this, I used the Davines Defining 
hairspray, perfecting hairspray with the Amica curling iron. And that's how you got your little curls over here? That's how I got this shape, yeah. All right, impressive with yeah. your styling. This was all hand dried and then I used just a curl rod to define some of them. And then here you saw I chose to cut dry, flat iron the hair lightly, and then applied some of the um, Paul Mitchell spray wax. I think we've got it. I might play around a little bit more with slicing. As you do that, um, we just have one question from Jared sure. that seems interesting. Um, and it goes like this. What's the most common bad form body position we should change or, or look out for? The one that hurts. You know, um, I personally, as I said in the beginning of the video, I, I don't believe there is one right body position or one wrong body position. I think we're all different. And I've seen, now I used to think that, you know, early in my career, I was like, you, you're supposed to stand this way. You're supposed to hold it that way. You're supposed to do this. You're supposed to do that. And every one of those beliefs or dogmas that I had was proven wrong by seeing a great hair cutter do something incredible in a way that I thought you weren't supposed to do. So personally, it's about learning. Pick a method. You know, I don't know where you are in your career, but... Pick a method that you can respect, whether it be Sassoon, Tony and Guy, Pivot Point. Learn their way, because obviously they've come up with theories. Learn it, and then start to practice to make your own approach. Yeah. So start with something, learn it, practice it diligently. After a few years, then start to break the rules and see what happens. That's my recommendation for you guys today. I hope you've enjoyed this. Professionals who practice will be coming back to you every two weeks with different artists sharing some of their work on some of these wonderful Pivot Point mannequins. Thank you to our friends at Pivot Point for providing these incredible mannequins so we could do these lessons. Peace out, everybody. We love you. We'll see you soon.